My gravity assist was my village. You always hear, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. When I was about five years old, I went to the uh, planetarium in London and it just completely opened my mind. I was nine years old when uh, Apollo 11 landed and I'll never ever forget watching. A gravity assist is when a spacecraft gets a boost of speed as it flies by an object like Earth or Jupiter. But I also like to talk about gravity assist as an inspirational boost. It's that person, place, thing, or event that propels people into the careers that they have today. Hi, I'm Jim Green, and after five fantastic years, as I have retired from the role of the NASA Chief Scientist, NASA's Gravity Assist podcast is coming to a close. I'm so grateful to you, the listeners, for coming on this journey with me to tour the solar system and beyond, to investigate the moon, to search for life beyond Earth, and of course, to interview those that are doing the discoveries that we are every day. You know, for this special final episode, we're going to talk about some of the highlights of Gravity Assist and some of our NASA memories of how we pulled these off. Now, it's not only me that made these things happen. And as you know, that takes a team. And that team is Liz Landau and Manny Cooper. And they're here with me to talk about the success that we've had and the workings that needed to make this such a success behind the scenes at Gravity Assist. So welcome, Liz and Manny. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be here. <laughs> and it's really hard to choose favorite episodes or even favorite Gravity Assist. But what I thought I'd do is, is have a, a, a chat with, with Liz and Manny about what our favorites are. So without further ado, Liz, what are your favorite episodes in Gravity Assist? Oh my gosh, Jim, it's so hard to choose. I mean, it's been such an incredible journey to learn about the solar system and beyond, but especially some of the episodes in the astrobiology season were really compelling to me. You know, people going out to learn about Antarctica, finding out that there is life everywhere you look, even in the most extreme conditions on Earth, as well as people looking at exoplanets for signs of life and how we might do that. Ravi Kapaparu at Goddard, I really enjoyed that episode. He talked about the possibility of could we even find pollution on an exoplanet? That's just so wild. We can't make this show happen without our audio engineer, Manny Cooper. Manny, what's, what are some of the episodes that really stand out for you? There are a couple of episodes that really resonate with me. Um, the first one is the What Does Mars Sound Like episode with Nina Lanza. Um, that was really cool, you know, especially being an audio engineer and getting to listen to sounds on Mars. The Ingenuity helicopter off in the distance and then the metallic wheels on Perseverance, you know, rolling along. Can we hear the wind on Mars? We can. And, you know, uh, in many ways, it sounds like the wind on Earth, but in other ways, it doesn't. So maybe we can take a listen. Yeah, let's do that. Another one was the uh, Listening to the Universe. The Kim Arcan episode was really interesting, too. She worked with an engineer to compose musical pieces. Yeah, Kim's data sonifications were amazing. Let me play you a clip from one of those. This is a very classic image. It's, of course, our home galaxy. We're looking at the inner about 400 light year region around the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star, at the very core of the Milky Way. Episodes uh, that I really like uh, are those that come with a surprise. When Catherine Walker talked about how she almost fell through a glacier, <laughs> I mean, my heart stopped. You know, another one that I really liked was Sonny Panjiwani, who he was in the uh, JSC control room when the Russian module called Science was just connected to the International Space Station and one of the rockets turned on. 
And that started the entire space station to spin. It was just surreal being there my first day and feeling like I was still stuck in a simulation. It really taught me that our training is there to push us to our limits again. And, um, and sometimes, you know, you, you just, you're sitting there and you can't believe what's happening, but you're calm and you're collected and you're ready to work the problem. I would go as far as to say that this entire process has been like my gravity assist. Yeah, I really feel the same way, Nanny. Like it's really one of my favorite things that I've ever worked on to be able to be a fly on the wall and listen to Jim Green talk to such an amazing range of people and to learn about the possibilities of what is out there. We do hope that all of our audience out there has been inspired by this show in some way, shape or form. But you can also find out so many other great NASA podcasts by going to nasa.gov slash podcasts. And in particular, check out things like The Curious Universe, for which more great stories about the agency are being discussed. I'm Jim Green, and this has been your Gravity Assist. <laughs>